All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. We've got a couple interesting stories to talk about today. The first story, Cedric McMillan, someone we rarely get to talk about on this channel um, because he posts so infrequently when it comes to physique updates um, and showing what he actually looks like. But finally, from Cedric, we get um, an actual posing video, which was interesting and really kind of random. So as you guys know, Cedric is on the qualified competitors list for the 2020 Mr. Olympia. And today, at under nine weeks out from the Olympia, we got kind of a glimpse of what Cedric is looking like at this point in his Olympia prep. Now, granted, all he kind of does is flex one of his quads here, and you don't really get to see him hit any poses. You just you kind of just get to see what his physique is looking like, no poses at all. But I think Cedric is looking pretty good here, and Cedric typically, in his physique updates, he usually looks really impressive because he's got such an impressive, imposing structure and frame to his physique. He's such a tall guy. He's a he's a really big bodybuilder. Um, and again, it usually comes down to the question of whether or not he's in shape on the day of the show, on the actual stage. But I rarely have seen a physique update from Cedric where I thought he doesn't look like he's you know he doesn't look impressive or he doesn't look like he's in shape. And obviously, at nine weeks out, all these guys that are posting physique updates have plenty of time to actually get in shape so that's really not what we're looking at at this point in their prep but he says you can tell I got kids by the magnet letters on the fridge oh and there's a little bit of muscles for y'all to analyze like this and that that's kind of funny because that's exactly what we're doing right now so I've been in the field for three days now it's time to get back to my grind ha ha happy Monday so at last year's Mr. Olympia, Cedric wound up in seventh. Where do you guys think Cedric is going to place at this year's Olympia with arguably one of the deepest Olympian lineups there has ever been? Do you guys think that Cedric has a shot at cracking the top six here at this year's Mr. Olympia in December? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, next up in the news, the Mr. Olympia 2020. It's kind of a miracle what has happened so far with the Olympia because really, you know, at the beginning of the year, when the Arnold Classic got canceled and there was so much speculation as to whether or not the Olympia would even be held uh, because all the qualifiers now were kind of questioned what would happen to those shows. Um, so, you know, when the Arnold Expo first got shut down, everyone was saying, man, this is this is going to be interesting to see what happens for the Olympia if all these qual if all these qualifiers get canceled. And, you know, people were thinking, you know, maybe these international athletes aren't going to be able to get to the Olympia. Maybe we aren't going to be able to qualify enough people to have an Olympia. And I got to say, obviously, the Olympia and the people behind it have done a really good job of actually qualifying enough athletes for each division. In fact, they've done such a good job that recently on the uh, Mr. Olympia Instagram page, they posted this video um, with Dan Solomon speaking in that video. He's like the top dog at the Olympia right now. And he says um, that this is a record setting year for the Olympia in terms of the number of qualified competitors. Now, that doesn't specifically apply to the men's open bodybuilding category. He's talking um, in regards to every category. So all the categories as a whole, 2020 has the most qualified athletes that there ever has been. So I believe the number that he talks about is 227 total qualified athletes for this year's Mr. Olympia, 44 of which were in the bikini division alone, which is typically the case. Now, I got to say, I really do think this is an impressive accomplishment because really, again, you know, it was a big question whether or not the Olympia would even happen. So the fact that they have a record number of people qualified, I think is actually really impressive. Um, so shout out to the IFBB and shout out to the people behind the Olympia because I think they really did a lot of last minute kind of crunch time shows and, you know, kind of changing some of these rules to make sure that these athletes had the opportunity to qualify for the Olympia. With all these shows being canceled, um, they made a real effort to relocate these shows, to postpone these shows, um, and then to adjust the points or the qualifications for the top three, like at the Spain show. And they did all these last-minute things to make sure people could try to get to the Olympia. Um, and I think that really deserves some recognition in a video. So give the video a thumbs up for everything the IFBB and the Olympia has done to make sure that the athletes can get there. I think it actually is really impressive because, again, you know, when all this stuff first started happening, it looked very unlikely that there would even be an Olympia, but they made this last minute kind of crunch time and they made it happen. So, shout out to them. So, here's the video from Dan on the Mr. Olympia Instagram page. All right, guys, I just got back from my son's baseball game, but I wanted to jump on real quick because I'm holding in my hands. Hot off the press is the official list of the 2020 
Olympia qualified athletes. Now we just wrapped up our final weekend of qualifying events, which means this list is now complete. And um, you know, when I had originally planned on making this announcement, I did not realize it was going to be a historic announcement. And as it turns out, this one is historic because this year, despite a lot of concerns surrounding whether or not we'd be able to qualify enough athletes for the event, as it turns out, we have qualified more athletes for this year's Olympia than any Olympia in the history of the competition. There are 227 qualified athletes for this year's 2020 Olympia, which of course will be at the Planet Hollywood in December. Tickets have gone on sale at MrOlympia.com. Um, 18 of those 227 athletes are going to be, are qualified to compete in the Miss Olympia. And of course this year marks the historic return of the Miss Olympia to Olympia weekend. For those people who are wondering, the division with the most qualified athletes is the Bikini Olympia. There are 44 ladies qualified who have earned the right to compete for this year's Bikini Olympia title. I wanna just give a quick shout out and a word of thanks to everybody at the IFBB Professional League offices, Jim Mannion, Tyler, and the entire crew um, for working around the clock to try to get these events on the schedule and to give these athletes an opportunity to compete and pursue their Olympia dreams. But even more so than that, I wanna thank all the promoters. This was a really difficult year to promote local and regional um, Olympia qualifying events. Uh, and in many cases, promoters weren't even allowed to sell tickets, which means they took big financial losses just to make sure these athletes had every opportunity to compete and to qualify for the Olympia. So to you guys, we appreciate it. Um, your hard work has not gone unnoticed. And I know the athletes around the world who are on this list um, deeply appreciate um, your hard work. Um, so 227 athletes qualified. It is a record and, uh, and we're excited to see how it all plays out this December at Planet Hollywood as the most coveted titles in the world are up for grabs. Uh, we hope to see you guys all out there in December to witness history. Now, next up in the news, Regan Grimes just put up a post on Instagram beginning his 2020 Mr. Olympia prep now that he knows officially that he will be going to the Olympia off of a top three finish in points. Now, he did take fourth at the Europa Spain show. The top three in Spain automatically bumped up to the qualified competitors list, um, and Regan was not one of those three. Now, on points, after the results of the Chicago Pro, um, Regan pushed out Rami for the top three spot, um, and Rami is no longer in that top three. So Regan replaced Rami, and Regan is now in that third place spot. Um, and that's the big question on everybody's mind. So Regan is beginning his Olympia prep. I'm sure he's very happy about it, and I'm excited to see how he does at the Olympia as well. Um, but think about, again, the big Rami special invitation. They've done kind of a special invitation almost every other year um, in recent memory for like the past decade or so. So it's not that rare of a thing. And the more I was thinking about it last night, I think the best argument for Rami getting a special invitation is Flex Lewis being out. Um, because Flex Lewis, like I said in my last video, Flex Lewis, while I think he certainly deserved it, I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind that Flex deserved a special invitation um, because he's won so many 212 Olympias. But again, there was no official rule that says if you win the 212 Olympia, you qualify for the Men's Open Olympia. So to get him to the Men's Open Olympia, there had to be a special invite to Flex Lewis to that Olympia. But now that Flex is injured and he can't compete, obviously that special invitation is now null and void. So maybe it's time to offer it to somebody else. Perfectly good special invitation that they have not used yet this year now. I've seen a lot of good arguments um, and some bad arguments for Big Rami deserving a special invitation, but I think the best argument is this. Where do you think Big Rami will place in this year's Mr. Olympia if he's offered a special invitation? There's like, what, 20 guys qualified already. Maybe more than that. There's a lot of names on the qualified competitors list right now. Um, there's quite a few guys competing. Let's say 20 plus, um, or at least 20 plus are qualified. Out of those, how many of them do you think are beating Rami? At Rami's Olympia debut, meaning his first Olympia ever in 2013, he took eighth. And he's never placed lower than eighth at the Olympia. So where do you think he's going to place? I think if we're all being honest with ourselves... If Rami preps like normal for the Olympia, he's not placing anywhere lower than 10th. He's going to be top 10. I would almost guarantee it. I would love to bet on that. 
And the Olympia is supposed to be the best bodybuilders in the world. So if you could almost guarantee that Rami would beat half of or more than half of those qualified competitors, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to the other guys that qualified for the Olympia, but let's just be real. Big Rami has always been in the top 10 of the Olympia. He's never been out of it. So he is one of the best bodybuilders in the world. And if you had to bet on where he would place in 2020, I'm pretty sure most people would bet he would be in the top 10, again, beating half of that lineup. In his last Olympia placing in 2018, he was sixth. In 2017, he was second. At one point, he was the second best bodybuilder in the world. And in 2018, he was still in the top six bodybuilders in the world. And at the 2020 Arnold Classic, he was third. I think top three at the Arnold still puts him in that conversation as one of the best bodybuilders on the planet. So I love this debate. I think it's an interesting one. A lot of you out there feel very strongly one way or the other. Some of you guys hate the idea of a special invitation. Some of you guys love the idea. Personally, there's been some cases where I haven't liked it. I haven't liked some of the special invitations offered to Kai. Um, you know, the Kevin Lavrone one was interesting. It was fun to watch. It was entertaining. But in retrospect, I don't really like it because Kevin Lavrone Kevin Lavrone had been uh, retired for over a decade, whereas you got a guy like Big Rami who is – He's been prepping. He's been trying to compete for months. He originally was going to compete in the Arnold Australia, which got canceled. And then he was going to compete in Spain, which he couldn't compete in because he tested positive. Then his only other option was Chicago, but he couldn't go there because he had to quarantine for two weeks. So Big Rami is a current competitor. At one point recently, he was the second best bodybuilder on the planet. He's been trying to compete. He's been prepping for months. And all these things keep happening to him that are way outside of his control. And honestly, anybody that says Big Romney faked the results of that test, you're an idiot. Anyone that says that, there's no truth to it. There's no proof to it. There's no evidence at all that suggests that. I mean, you really think Big Romney would fake a reason to miss his qualification for the Olympia that he's been saying all year he wants to go to? I see it more and more in the comment section saying that Rami faked it, and then I'm seeing the people that are making the videos. He didn't fake it. That's just, that's stupid. Now, the final story today is the question on everybody's mind, at least if you're a Sean Roden fan. Will Sean Roden be at the 2020 Mr. Olympia competing? We finally get like a really definitive answer from Sean about the 2020 Mr. Olympia, and this was courtesy of Jay Cutler TV YouTube channel, which was filmed by Dave Mad Max 6. He does a fantastic job with the videos on that channel, um, and this is no exception. I'm going to roll a brief clip from that video. If you guys want to watch the whole video, go check it out on Jay's channel. Um, but here's Sean Roden's answer to that question. So, will you be doing the 2020 Olympia or no? Because people want to know. Well, uh, I, I want to address this. And uh, listen, I know a lot of people, you know, do a lot of flying. Know, to Olympia LLC, IDB Pro League, about you know having Sean compete and what's not, but you know there's a due process for everything that's going on with me, and I'm willing, you know, to go through that process. Um, the next time I step on stage, I'm going to step on stage, you know, with nothing hindering me from being the best me or you know taking the focus off me competing. And 2020 Olympia is, is not for me this year. Um, if you guys heard your first, um, I want to be in stage 100% and compete in as Sean Roden with nothing hanging over my head. And you know, once this process is complete, you know, I, I will be in stage. But right now, the focus is at Larley. You know, I want Larley to be the best Larley with nothing else. You know, I don't want anybody me being on stage and nothing else more than me being on stage competing. First and foremost, I want to. This will go away. This will be behind me, and I'll, I'll be able to focus on this thing that just bodybuilding, but you know, Sean Roden life and everything else, and get my life back. And you know, until then, um, I'm training. I'm training as if I'm competing. I know. You know, because nothing has changed. Um, I'm still training. I'm still eating. I'm working out, and you know, because I know at the end of the day. You know, I will be back on stage competing, and, but I'll be on stage competing as Sean Roden with nothing else or, you know. It's too bad because I would love to be on stage in December. Oh. Um, I think a lot of people would, yeah. All these other guys is competing. Now, Phil is coming back, Flex Lewis. Yeah. 
uh, Rolly Winkler, William Bonac, you know, Brandon, of course, Brandon yeah. Curry, Mr. Olympia. Um, you know, so it would have been great to be a stage battling with Brandon and Phil, you know, and Dexter and Flex Lewis as the Mr. Olympia could be in. Um, but right now, you know, that hasn't been my focus. My focus has been, hey, listen, Larley's competing. So Sean basically says when he wants when he competes again, he wants to compete as Sean Roden with nothing hanging over his head. And he says for that reason, 2020 Mr. Olympia is not in the cards for him because it seems like he thinks or knows that, you know, the situation will not be resolved before then. And I totally understand that. If he is innocent, um, I agree. Why would you want to compete, you know, with this just stigma hanging over your head? You would want to be you would want your name cleared and people not to hold that against you. They just want to judge you as a bodybuilder. You want them to judge you as a bodybuilder and not necessarily um, these outside circumstances influencing what people think of you. And if Sean truly is innocent, I think that will be one of the most exciting Mr. Olympias ever because Sean did say, you know, I don't care how old I am, I'm going to compete again. The Olympia that Sean gets to come back, again, if he is innocent, Sean's comeback Olympia, I think will be more exciting than any other Mr. Olympia in recent memory because, you know, he gets the opportunity to redeem himself. And if Sean came back and won, you know, what what a great bodybuilding story or what, what a great story in general that would be if after everything Sean's been through, he were able to clear his name and then come back and win back his title that he won in 2018. Just some food for thought, but that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Please subscribe to this channel if you had not subscribed already. We're on the road to a million now, 25,000 subscribers away from that million milestone. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.